Yeah, but what about the people who don't call on the name of the Lord? Yeah, where do they go? How does that work? It's not an easy thing to talk about, but let's talk about it. Let's see what the Bible says. What is clear right the way through is that there is going to be a point of judgment. There's going to be a dividing line moment. In the Christian church over the last 2,000 years, there's been debate. There have been basically three main schools of thought in the Christian church over the years. Some people believe that those who die and, and that they're separated from God, who, because God is the source of all life, and if they're separated from that source of all life, then they simply would cease to exist. That's, there, would, there would be some people who would think that. I, I think it, it is, that's a hard one to sustain based on the reading of the Bible, but there, there are certainly some people who would believe that. Um, some people believe uh, that those who are separated from Jesus will, will always have the option to come back. That, that, that option will never be taken away. Uh, and depending on how they frame it and how it works, basically the picture is that God's love will actually triumph over his justice. Uh, and a pastor called Rob Bell wrote a book called Love Wins, basically saying that, uh, and uh, got a, a lot of blowback from that. Uh, and then the third position is, uh, they use a technical, they use this as a technical term, but it doesn't sound like a very nice technical term. They say that some people, that people who die separated from Jesus exist in an eternal and conscious torment. They try and use those language, that language technically. I think what is clear in the Bible, that there is a point of separation and that those who die with Jesus as Lord spend time with Jesus and go to be with Jesus and then there is a division. How do you make sense of that though? How does a loving God do that? Uh, one of the people that's helped me to make sense of that is a guy, C.S. Lewis. Uh, the book, The Problem of Pain, is worth reading. And he says this, I willingly believe that the damned are, in one sense, successful rebels to the end. That the doors of hell are locked on the inside not on the outside. They enjoy forever the horrible freedom they've demanded and are therefore self-enslaved. Just as the blessed, forever submitting to obedience, become through all eternity more and more free. In the long run... The answer to all those who object to the doctrine of hell is itself a question, C.S. Lewis writes. What are you asking God to do? To wipe out their past sins at, end, at all costs, to give them a fresh start, smoothing every difficulty and offering every miraculous help? But he's done so already. At Calvary. What else do you want of them? To forgive them? They will not let themselves be forgiven. To leave them alone? Alas, Lewis writes, I'm afraid that is what he does. And so it is not a, a light thing. But there is this central truth in our faith. The more you let yourself submit to Jesus as Lord, the freer you will become. But the more you try and grasp your own freedom, you can reflect on your own life and you know this is true. The more you try and grasp your own freedom separate to God, the more you know you become enslaved to the things you're grasping for. Isn't that true? And that ultimately, heaven and hell is the extrapolation of that reality we know too well already. And ultimately, for each one of us, what does all this mean? It means we really should be concerned 
about keeping ourselves in right relationship with God. We should. But we need to then also then entrust those people we love into the hands of a God who loves them far more than you could ever love them. We need to release them into his hands, trusting that ultimately it is true. He will never stop loving them. And we don't fully, as, I, as you're probably picking up, we don't fully understand how it's all going to work, but we do know that God loves each person on the face of the planet. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Listen to this. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't come to condemn but to save the world through him. The danger about focusing too much on what happens when we die is that faith becomes this thing about fear. And that's just not a healthy place to live from. Our faith is meant to be a loving response to a God who loves us. Not a fearful insurance policy for what might happen when we die. 